Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and it is fall now and you may hear a blower out in the distance because it is that time of year. Let me see where he's blowing. He's blowing one of the yards close by. I can hear him, I just can't see him. Hear that? Okay, anyway, it's the blowing season. Okay, so also I was going to do a little update. I haven't said anything in a while about my sons and their baseball. My 15-year-old, who's now a sophomore in high school, has he's been he's a lefty pitcher, and he has now gotten up to I think he's in the 81 to 83 mile an hour, mile an hour range. We are trying to get this lefty up to 90. He he works a program every day and lifting weights and all that business, and he's coming along. My nine-year-old had a game last night. He's playing fall ball baseball, and um. He pitched one inning, struck two out, and one of them was thrown out at uh, by the shortstop. And he was, I think he was one for two. He had a line drive into out into center field, and then he hit a hard ground ball, but it took a bad bounce to the pitcher, and they threw him out at first, but he did hit a runner in. So we're good. And the Braves are tonight. How about them apples? I can't wait to watch the Braves. I'm wanting to watch the Braves finally seal the deal. Okay. Our old buddy Gary Gensler was on CNBC today. Here we go. We've got a raft of cheering people down here from ProShares. The ProShares uh, Bitcoin ETF, the futures ETF, is starting trading. Just started a few moments ago. I have to ask you, can you, can you explain to our viewers why you chose to allow a Bitcoin futures ETF to begin trading, but have not yet approved a regular Bitcoin ETF? Um. Bob, thank you for that question. Uh, just to give you a little context, I think that we in the official sector uh, should be uh, technology neutral, but not policy neutral. And so what we're trying to do is ensure to the best we can within our authorities to bring uh, projects into the investor protection perimeter. Imagine that Gary Gensler is giving another BS non-answer to a question. So what you just mentioned, uh, Bitcoin futures have been overseen by our sibling agency, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, which I was once uh, honored and proud to serve there. And that's been four years. And uh, some of these applications came in and went effective, as you said, one of them went effective uh, with regard to those uh, products over at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange that our sibling agency oversees. I think the... I was listening to, um, uh, one of the things I've always thought is hilarious is on Howard, the Howard Stern Show. I'm a big Howard Stern Show fan. And he's got... Uh, Richard and Sal, who are there, he hired them to do nothing but make prank phone calls. And they call into radio shows, and their whole object there, there was one prank call I was listening to one time. Their whole objective is to call into the show and see how long they can talk in circles without saying anything at all, and see how long that the people running the radio shows would tolerate it and listen to it. That's what Gary Gensler and Janet Yellen are pros at doing. That's what they do. And I think I think that it's intentional. I don't think I'm taking my sweatshirt off here. I think it's intentional. I think that they that it's a tactic that they use to to uh, it's a way to give people non-answers and not and be non-committal to anything and not have to be held accountable for anything. I think that's that's what I think you call that a bureaucrat and that's what they are. And it's disgusting to watch. It's, uh, if there's anything in this life that I would point at and say to my kids, don't be one of those, that's what I would say to them. Now, I got ahead of myself. I need to go back a little bit. XRP Bart sent me this. This is BitBoy, and he's got something to say about XRP today. Yeah. Uh, check this out, guys. XRP will catch up with Bitcoin and Ethereum to make a new all-time high at $5. How before he talks anymore, listen, if we ever have a level level playing field, XRP 
the, which is the whole reason whoever is behind this has done it, if there was ever a level playing field, and they know it too, Joseph Lubin knows it, they all know it, XRP would crush Bitcoin and Ethereum overnight probably because it's just better tech and they all know it and that's the whole reason for all this, folks. Our future XRP price levels determine if they've never traded those price levels before. A series of different types of analysis should be completed to speculate the project of a future price range. For this analysis, I will be using Elliott Wave Theory. That's what you do. Elliott! I think. <laughs> that was good. Thanks, appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, a natural harmonic values found in the light and sound spectrum. Um, and here are some different, some, uh, different kinds of indicators that he uses for this. Um, we got a GAN line, we got a Fibonacci, we got a major octave, we have a GAN square, we have another Fibonacci. I don't and understand. All of these are I don't understand any of that, but I hope he's right. Um, wanted to show you this from Eleanor Terrett from yesterday. Um, this is Charles Gasparino and her. I don't think I showed you all this picture, but it's Brad Garlinghouse with them at the Milken Institute. Just wanted to show you that. That was the Gary Gensler saying nothing clip. Okay. Wanted to show you this. So we remember Gasparino's New York Post um, article from Sunday. So I'm going, I'm trying to go out and all of these people who, who call themselves journalists and, and they're specifically involved in crypto, they've been covering it for a long time. I'm calling them on the carpet and saying, listen, th there is no bigger story than this in crypto. So you got to make up your mind. Are you a crypto journalist or are you a Bitcoin Ethereum journalist? That's the question. And the silence, oh, the silence, the silence tells you everything, folks. Let's call them out by name. Paul Vigna is one of them. Will not cover this story. Nathaniel Popper will not cover this story. Matt Ly Lysing, he's the one that wrote the book out of the ether. Will not cover this. CoinDesk will not cover this. Michael J. Casey, chief con content at officer at CoinDesk. Uh, and advisor to MIT Media, formerly advisor to MIT Media Lab, won't cover this. Coin Telegraph won't cover this. Decrypt Media won't cover this. Anthony Pompliano won't cover this. Then there's this. This is from the other day. Um, Ripple Eye had had shown this. This begins in March 22, 2014, one year before they get the license from MIT. They are building out the wallets first, I believe. Now, I don't know what this is. I just know that somehow. Um, Ethereum is involved at MIT, um, and I don't I don't know this is tech stuff, so I'm I don't know all about it. But the point is, I think here the point is is that in something was going on with Ethereum in 2014, um, and and so and I just piecing things together here from from my standpoint, MIT. I'm telling you, Gary Gensler was put there for a reason. MIT. All eyes on MIT. Speaking of MIT, look at this clip, okay? Now, this is from 3-17-2018 at the MIT Bitcoin Expo. Gary Gensler, Jerry Brito. Now, these guys are all characters that matter, folks, okay? They're, these are guys that have been involved in this. And I think, I can't remember if this is the same guy, but I think it's that Patrick Merck guy. Don't quote me on that. I think it is, though. Um, all th these two guys right here, I think just, I'm assuming that's Patrick Merck right there. This is Jerry Brito. These guys, he's Coin Center, okay? Susan Athey used to be at Coin Center, and, and a part of me is wondering why she's not there now. Because Coin Center, if you look at it, it's very clearly their Bitcoin, Ethereum, Maxis over there. All these organizations, these nonprofits that are supposedly industry uh, nonprofits that are that are trying to promote the the crypto industry they're really from what I can tell promoting Bitcoin and Ethereum which is why none of these guys will come out and talk about what's going on with the Ethereum free pass they can't okay so this is on March 17th of 2018 five days later is when Gensler meets with Clayton to discuss Bitcoin that's according to Charles Gasparino and it, w it was actually the word he used was to lobby for Bitcoin does anyone really believe that? Uh, does anyone really believe he wasn't in the Ethereum free pass discussions at this point? Don't worry, we'll find out. Listen right here. That's why I think the CFTC definitely gets it. I think the SEC, you know, the SEC is not in the business of saying what things are not securities. 
Um, but I, I'm, you know, if I if I had to guess, I would guess that commissioners and staff at the SEC understand something like Bitcoin is not security. Um, Congress is a little bit. They did. I, yeah. I would say they understand Bitcoin's yeah. not a commodity, uh, not a security. Right. It gets a little trickier when you get to. Um, yeah. Um, Ether. I mean, you know. How does he know? How how does he know what the SEC thinks about ether? I mean, he's he's not talking like somebody that's been watching Jay Clayton videos. He's talking like he knows, and and he's there in the talks. I mean, that's that's how he's talking. All right, maybe that's not because it's so established. But then, right. what do you do? File coin and you start yeah, down the yeah. down the. Totally. So um, Ether, I think there's a, there's a very um, good case to be made that it's not uh, a security. Um, and there's, you, there's a good case that they want to make. Let's correct that. You know, uh, of course, you have to look at each of them individually. Um, and so I think the CFTC, the SEC, they get it. Okay. That's why I think the CFTC. Now let's look at this. And I said it's, it's very important that you understand who all these people are. Jerry Brito, the guy that was talking right down there that guy right there jerry brito who runs coin center this is a, a, tw a post from him i think this is the day that the lawsuit was filed against ripple he posts here's a post where we argue bitcoin is not a security here's a post where we argue ethereum is not a security you won't find a similar post for ripple we have nothing to say about it so that's who these people are these are maxis folks that's what they are they're Bitcoin and Ethereum proof of work maxis, which is which has always baffled me because proof of work doesn't work. XRP dwarfs these from a technological perspective. They're not even in the in the the realm, Ethereum or Bitcoin. And all these people are not stupid. They know it. Okay, they're they're threatened by it. So then there's this. Um, I I tweeted out Gary Gensler, Jerry Brito, Mike J Casey, um, and this guy here which is patrick merck okay were any of you guys involved in the the venture capital working group discussions which led to the safe harbor document sent to the sec in march 2018 and eventually gave ethereum a free pass i'm trying to update my timeline and i'm showing them my timeline i want them to help me build this timeline because if they're in it it would only be a factual record of what's gone on. And so what's the harm in that? If you have nothing to hide, help me out here. Throw a dog a bone. And then I asked the journalists to help too. Can any of you journalists help here? Laura Shin, 2-Bit Idiot. This is Ryan Selkis of Masari. Nathaniel Popper, he's the guy that wrote the New York Times article. He's the guy that apparently the... Uh, venture capital work working group information was leaked to because he wrote the article in the New York Times Paul Vigna okay he's the guy that wrote the book with Michael J Casey okay the truth machine Matt Lysi Lessing he's the guy that wrote the book out of the ether Coindesk Cointelegraph Decrypt Media and then I copied in Charles Gasparino and John Deaton I asked Julia Chatterley not more than eight months ago she was all about some crypto wanted to talk about crypto on her show all the time but once this jay clayton thing came up and she's nowhere to be found doesn't want to talk about it won't talk about it we've copied her in and not to, we don't even have to say anything about cnbc these guys telling the truth i don't know if that's even in their arsenal now joe rogan joe rogan's a, a truth teller just for shits and giggles maybe i copied him in on this you never know um, and then there's this. You know what? I'm going to save this one for the next video because I've already gone over my time. But let me show you this. Um, Link2 is one of my sponsors, linqto.com. They added some more Ripple equity to the platform, not to be confused with XRP, the digital asset. Um, and then they added, they've got Link2 up there still and some Uphold and Kraken. So go check it out. Um, it's for accredited investors, and you, they'll help you find out whether you are one. So, And i got links to this in the description of my videos. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family to go check out Link2. 